Hi everyone, Sandra Duran Wilson here and welcome to this week's Mixed Media Soul Sparks. Every week I bring you some different ideas for painting and mixed media techniques, inspirational exercises and studio tips. So thanks for joining me this week and today I want to share with you some framing tips and this was a suggestion that was left in the comments from YouTube and so if you ever have anything you want me to share or explore please leave those comments in the, the YouTube links. So framing, there's you know a world of differences in framing. I mean you can go very expensive in your framing or you can do it yourself and I'm going to show you a few very nice ways to start out with this is a frame from ampersand that they make and it comes nicely packaged and it has all of the uh, stuff that you need to frame and including the picture hanger some little bumpers and even the hanger that goes into the wall it comes with all these instructions but the reason i really like this is because this is a dual purpose piece. I can use this to frame a three quarter inch, or I think it says up to seven eighths of an inch deep. I don't have an eight by 10 that size, but you can, let me just show you. This is the perfect depth to go into this frame. And it is a little less than an inch. I would come in back here and just use the screws and screw this into the wood cradling. However, a lot of times I work on these flat panels. And the reason I like these is because it comes with these little pieces of wood that I can use to actually put back here and then I can screw that in and I will have the proper depth for a flat panel. And I'm not gonna do all of that, but you'll get the idea. So here we go. Oops. So I get that all lined up with the holes and then I screw that in from the back and it's ready to go. So the thing about ampersand, I mean, they're great frames, they're beautiful wood but they're limited in sizes. So maybe you have a piece that is a different size and then they don't make that size. There's another company I use. I like to uh, use these small squares, these flat panels in my work. And if ampersand doesn't have the size frame you need, this company I buy these from is called Canvas Place. It's an online um, company out of LA. And I'll put the links down in the comments. But these have to be glued in. And the only disadvantage of that is that you can't take it out and change frames if somebody wants a different color. However, they do make frames in white, a natural, I think a dark brown, and the black. This is the adhesive that I use to glue my pieces in. It's E6000. And what I do, you can see this is my tube that I've been using. And I just run a bead of glue along here. And then I pop this in. I turn it upside down because that glue is very fluid. And I probably put like, um, you know, I put something underneath. Put some foam here to protect my painting. And then I'll put a book on top to weight this. I always come back after a couple minutes, I want to check and I want to make sure that this is lined up properly. Then I go back, I put it back, I weight it, and I usually leave it overnight because this glue kind of stinks. So I try and do it in a well-ventilated area or a space where you can close the door and, and not be in the room with it. And then I would just put my hangers on here. I usually use a little uh, D-ring hanger. But if you like to use those little uh, saw, what do they call sawtooth hangers, you can use those too. So that's another way. Now this is also a frame by Canvas Place. 
and they just started making the frames for flat panels maybe a couple of years ago. And before, they were only made for like this three quarter inch deep. But they're really made for stretched canvases. And the stretched canvases have a much deeper cradle back there. So even with these, I find I have to glue these. I would do the same thing. I would put the glue, actually I like to put the glue on the inside edge of the frame. Then I put the piece in and then I do the same thing as I did before. This is a, a frame called Illusions Frame. I think it comes from Blick, which is an online retailer. Now this is a really deep one and I want to show you what I mean by the stretch canvas. You see on this stretch canvas how much wood there is here as opposed to that small cradle of wood. So when you go into here, you have these other kind of hangers that are meant to go on here. You know, sometimes you get these things and you're like, how do you do this? You look at the, the tools and the materials and they don't come with really any directions. So if you haven't done this before, this will help. I know the first time I looked at it, it's like, how do you do this? What makes it stay in there? There we go. So these little things, you see how they're even two different lengths. The smaller one goes up there, the larger one there, and then you have to get this, oops, there you, go. you have to get it to where you can screw it into the wood on both sides. This particular frame, because it's, a, it's an edge that's meant to be shown and not, not framed, it's a little different, but if you have a regular stretched canvas, this is how you would put this on with these little brackets. Okay, and so then it's going to have this very deep, deep frame. All right, so those are all frames that you buy. But what if you don't want to buy a frame? Or what if you have something that's a really odd shape? What do you do then? This is what I like to do. So this is just a piece of plywood. Here's my painting. And then these are just some pieces of leftover wood. I have painted the plywood with black gesso. It's just one coat on here. You could probably do two coats. Make sure you go in around the edges. And on the plywood, you know, when you cut it, it's kind of got that raw edge. Sometimes I'll go in with a paste or a gel and I'll kind of fill that in. But if it doesn't really bother you, just put another coat of paint. Let this dry, and then you take your leftover wood. If you've got a bigger piece, you know, you could use strips like this, depending on how you want the piece raised above the back. I'm just going to use these two. I would use the same glue, the E6000. I would weight these, let them dry, overnight, then I'm going to come back in and I'm going to mount the painting onto the surface. I would use uh, protective foam over here and then put some weight on it, maybe a book or something, heavy book. So then once that's all dry, you know, you can put, just put your hangers on the back wherever you want it. Now here's one other idea. And I like to paint the edges of these flat panels. And I like to paint them black. Use, you know, just some black gesso or black paint. You can use a brush or a cosmetic sponge to paint that so it looks a little more finished. Then, let's say I, I didn't want to um, put it on a frame, but I didn't want it to like, sit against the wall. I could just take these pieces glue them directly onto the back and either hang it from there or put a wire on it. But when it sits on the wall, it's going to be raised away from the wall. So this is probably the simplest way to use these flat panels to hang something. So I hope you found some good ideas for your artwork. I know when using flat panels like this, they're inexpensive. It's also less uh, room to store things 
And coming up in a future session, I'm going to show you some alternative ways of mounting paper and canvas. But for now, we've got some fun tips to hang your art. And I'd love to see your comments, suggestions for anything else you'd like to see in the Mixed Media Soul Sparks. And thank you for joining me this week. Join the community and share your creations on social. Use the hashtag Mixed Media Soul Sparks. I look forward to seeing your comments in the comment section.